Praise the Lord, everyone. I want to talk to you briefly on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Some people have wondered as to whether this baptism of the Holy Ghost is relevant for today, if it's necessary. And the answer is yes. Of course, it's necessary. God's gifts and callings are without repentance. And it's a promise by Jesus Christ himself. In Mark 16, he stated, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. And this is literal. This is a literal statement from Jesus Christ. This isn't spiritual or an analogy. These are little thing, literal things that accompany belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Literal casting out of devils. Uh, literally drinking a deadly thing accidentally and it will not hurt the believer. Literally taking up a serpent. As we've seen the Apostle Paul uh, stuck his hand in a pile of sticks and he was latched onto by a viper, a snake. And the men who beheld that said that he would die instantaneously, but he shook off the viper and he was able to proceed as normal. That was a literal situation that occurred of him, of him being bitten. And likewise with us, if we find ourselves not tempting God, not mocking God, not trying to be snake handlers on purpose to try to tempt God, but if we find ourselves being latched onto by a snake uh, unknowingly walking through the forest or through the woods or through a jungle, we can shake it off in Jesus' name and, and we're going to proceed as normal. If we are poisoned, we will drink that deadly poison unknowingly and we will proceed as normal without being affected. These are the benefits of being a born-again Christian. There are signs that follow them that believe. We will literally cast out devils through Jesus Christ, and we will literally speak with new tongues. And I want to talk to you a little bit about my experience with being baptized with the Holy Ghost at the close of this teaching. But let's just go ahead and take a look at a few scriptures that I believe will benefit you. In Jude 1, verse 20, the Bible states, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost... What does that mean to pray in the Holy Ghost? Well, it means to pray in the Spirit of God in a language unknown to you, in a new tongue. That's praying in the Spirit. You build up yourselves on your most holy faith when you pray in the Holy Ghost. And that is what happens when we pray in the Holy Ghost, when we pray in the Spirit, we build up our ourselves, our, our, our inward man, our spirit man, our soul even, and we're able to uh, bypass some of the trials of this life and the, the problems and obstacles that come against us by praying in the Spirit, by having that immediate communication via Spirit with God through an unintelligible, unknown language to us, but the Spirit knoweth how to pray for our infirmities with groanings that cannot be uttered. And that's all part of praying in the Holy Ghost. We build up ourselves on our most holy faith when we pray in the Spirit. And even Paul said that in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, he said, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I, and I will sing with the understanding also. Now, what is the understanding also? Well, that is his native known language. The, in, the intelligible opposed to unintelligible language, which is the Spirit language. So he will pray and sing in an unknown tongue, and he will also pray and sing in a known or native tongue that he understands well through his native language. So he understands the benefit of both, and one should not be neglected over the other. They're both beneficial. They're of necessity. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 2, Paul stated to the Galatians after he... He states, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? And then he states in verse 2, This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Now I want us to go back up and let's just take out a mental highlighter and, and highlight received. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? That's the question. Did they receive this 
Holy Ghost baptism by the works of the law, by doing the Old Testament rituals? No, of course not. They receive the Spirit of God by the hearing of faith. That's how they manifested the baptism of the Holy Ghost and spoke in new tongues. It wasn't through the works and the rituals of the old covenant laws. It was by the hearing of faith that they had the opportunity to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. And there would be a literal manifestation of that indwelling by speaking in new tongues. Now let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 1, a very famous passage used by those who are not believers, unbelievers actually, of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and feeling. In Ephesians 1.13 it states, In whom ye also trusted, after, notice after, that ye heard, let's once again highlight that, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Now the unbeliever of the baptism of the Holy Ghost will state, we'll see this is proof here, Ephesians 1.13, that once we believe the gospel, we receive the Holy Spirit. Well, no. One has to understand who the audience is, what the history is with these Ephesians. And we'll see that in Acts chapter 19, that they do have history with the Apostle Paul. But it's after they heard the word of truth, after they believed, they were sealed with the spirit of promise, and they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak in tongues. And we're going to take a look at that uh, the complementary verses of Scripture that lead to Ephesians 1.13 and why that's stated. In Acts chapter 19, let's just go ahead and start at verse... We'll, we'll take it to verse 1 in Acts chapter 19. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost? Notice, since... Ye believed. I want you once again to take out the mental highlighter, yellow, orange, blue, and highlight since. Since ye have believed. And they said unto him, We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And then we'll scroll down a little, a few verses after he uh, speaks to them on baptism and they're uh, told about baptism in Jesus' name. He rebaptizes them. And in verse 6, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So there we see it once again. They spoke in new tongues and prophesied. After he laid his hands upon them, after they received the word. And just like we just read, they heard the word of truth, and after they believed, they were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. We don't see that the Ephesian, that the Ephesian disciples of John the Baptist put up any sort of rebuttal to Paul's uh, teaching. They didn't put up a fuss. They didn't argue back and forth. They didn't abate. They didn't, you know, speak words of unbelief. They didn't question whether that was from God or not, as many people do in our time. They question whether it's from God. They speak on the Holy Spirit as evil, as demonic. And therefore, they blaspheme the Spirit of God, which is there no, there's no repentance from that. They've doomed themselves, essentially. Uh, they don't believe it's for today. They have no faith. They're unbelievers. But we do not see with the disciples that with the disciples of John. Uh, nor do we see that in Acts chapter 10 with the Gentile believers. The Bible says, when they heard the preaching, when Peter spoke the word, while Peter yet spoke these things, while he preached on Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. And they too received the Holy Ghost. Why? Let's take a look. Acts chapter 10. Or how? Do we know this? Acts, Acts chapter 10. That in verse 45, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 46, very important. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So there you have it. The evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the evidence of one being a true believer, is an initial manifestation of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And let's go ahead and conclude with this last scripture in Acts chapter 8. 
uh, Philip the evangelist was preaching to the Samaritans, they received the word. Notice in verse 12, but when they believed, highlight that, believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Verse 14, now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had, notice, received the word of God. So they believed it, verse 12, and verse 14 says they received it. You got to receive it after you believe it. A lot of people who are unbelievers who do not believe the baptism of the Holy Ghost is for today, uh, they have not received it. They have rejected the teaching of the Spirit of God. So the Samaritans, they believe it, they receive it. And now in verse 15, uh, so back up to 14, now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Now, why would you pray for a believer? Why would you pray for someone who believes the gospel, who has received the gospel? Why would you pray for someone to receive the Holy Ghost who has been baptized in Jesus' name? Well, apparently because the apostles were looking for something. They were Holy Ghost inspectors. And they received the word of God. They believed the word of God. They were even, they even gone as far as being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. But now... The apostles are sent down to them to pray over them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Verse 16, notice, for as yet he, the Holy Ghost, was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that is what we are seeing today in our time. We have a multitude of professing believers who say they believe Jesus. But when it comes to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they have been brainwashed and poisoned by their unbelieving teachers to believe that it is not relevant for today and that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is something that has been done away with. Well, not according to the scriptures. If we rightly divide the word of truth, we understand that once a person receives the word of God and they believe the word of God and they're in anticipation and expectancy without any doubt or rebuttal that they are ripe to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that's what happened here. In verse 17, then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. There was a manifestation of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How do we know this? Because Simon, the sorcerer, begins to say, well, how much money do you want? I'll pay you. Give me this gift that to whomever I lay my hands upon, he too might receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter said, thy money perish with thee. Repent. So there was a physical manifestation that Simon had seen. And you can take a look at the description box for the video entitled uh, The Gift That Simon Saw. Something to that effect. Uh, there was a vis physical, visible manifestation that Simon had uh, seen or witnessed. And that was the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in new tongues. So praise the Lord. Those are the scriptures that I have for you today. There are many more we can refer reference, but for the sake of time, those are sufficient. But I will leave you with my testimony. When I came to the Lord Jesus Christ and understood the gospel many years ago, it was around this time of the year, as some call the Christmas uh, season. And I was listening to a uh, what they call a Christmas song on the radio at that time. And it was a song sung by a man and it was a very uh, pivotal song that spoke on the birth of Jesus Christ and I heard it and I received it and I believed it for the first time in 18 years of my life I had understood the salvation plan of God that he actually gave us a gift and in the midst of this season at the time that season at the time where a lot of gifts were being given and it was all about gifts and giving and receiving but i had understood the true gift that god gave to mankind which was his son jesus christ and, and stated this in that christmas song that gospel as they call it christmas song but i call it a gospel song because it it glorifies god 
and my heart my spirit was just open to that song and i received it and it just like a light bulb turned on and that was when the lord allowed me the his seed to begin to be fruitful in me to manifest itself in me and i and i received the gospel and i understood the death burial and resurrection for the first time out of 18 years of my life and i always thought i was a christian when i was younger than that but i hadn't really understood the the true meaning of the gift that god has given mankind his only begotten son and the light bulb was turned on at that time shortly thereafter and i and i said well let me go call this prayer line and i call the prayer line and i speak to a person there and tell them that I want to receive the baptism of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. And they began to talk to me a little bit about it. And they didn't tell me what to say or anything like that to repeat after me, no. They just said with so much confidence, they said, you're going to receive the Spirit of God. I want you to just go into a private place and just go pray to God and ask Him for His Spirit and just worship Him and praise Him and He's going to fill you with His Spirit. And they said it with such confidence and faith to the point where I literally felt their words penetrating my soul, the words of faith penetrating my soul. And I was very obedient. I hung up the phone. I said, okay, thank you. I hung up the phone. I rushed to my room. I was young at the time, early teens and, uh, or late teens, one of the two, 18. And I kneel at my bedside and I just, with sincerity, with honesty, with humility, lift up my hands and say the lord lord jesus if there's anything else that you would want me to have if you would want to fill me with your spirit i'm ready father i'm available i'm open i want more of you god i don't want to be lacking father and he saw the desire in me he saw the sincerity and as the scripture says if any man asks of the father he will give him the spirit and that is exactly what i did but i didn't really know about that verse at the time I was just coming to God with sincerity, lifting my hands. And I began to ask him for the Holy Spirit. And within the matter of like 30 seconds, I was baptized with the Holy Ghost. I began to speak with new tongues as the Spirit gave me utterance. And it was at that time that I knew I had it. And I had a smile from cheek to cheek. And I just slowly just turn over on my side on the floor on, on, on the carpet there and I knew I had it in me I just began to cradle myself and just thank God and I knew I had it and no one could take it away from me this was what they were praying over me for to receive that I hadn't received that I didn't know anything about this elation this empowering feeling in my soul in my spirit in my body was overwhelming to the point where I was just elated I was euphoric and shortly thereafter, days after, I began to cultivate the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God in me, by praying in the Spirit, as the Bible says in Jude, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit, praying in the understanding also. I began to utilize that prayer language and that, that, that Spirit in me by communicating with God from Spirit to Spirit. And it began to direct me and lead me to other believers who are like-minded, who also have the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, I say all that to say this. There are some people that are not going to receive this teaching. They're going to reject it. But from what we see in the Bible, we see men and women of God who not only believed the words of God and the apostles, but they received it and they were ripe and they were ready for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God has to see that a person truly has a desire. There's no doubt. There wasn't one ounce of doubt in me or rebuttal, or, or, or sort of confusion, or, or bite back, or fuss. There was none of that in me. It was just open. I want to receive it. I want more of you, God. And he saw the sincerity of the childlike faith, and he baptized me with his spirit, and I got the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of me today. His gifts and his callings are without repentance. It's God's will. It's his promise. It's a promise of the Father. It's his desire to fill you as a believer with his spirit. But you have to be willing and by faith, you have to receive that gift. If you are surrounded by any sort of teachers who teach opposed to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in new tongues, you need to rid yourself of them. Get rid of their teachings, their commentaries, their tapes, their CDs. Get rid of those sort of ministries that oppose the gifts of God. 
because they're not helping you they're killing you and you need to have the life of jesus christ on the inside of you it's not just it's not good enough to have a uh, an apollo's head knowledge acts chapter 18 yeah he was bold yeah he was very convincing yeah he was very forthright and he had knowledge of the scriptures he memorized scriptures he can recite scriptures to a t but he was still lacking that's why he was taken to the side and he was he was taught the way of god more perfectly and we know what that is we just put the pieces together in the very next chapter paul does the same thing to the uh disciples of john the baptism have you received the holy ghost since you believed there's a world of difference it's the holy ghost of god living on the inside of you you cannot just get by with the head knowledge maybe on this earth but when it comes to the kingdom of god when it comes to the day of judgment God is going to want to see if you have this, his only spirit, his spirit living on the inside of you. As Paul said, without the spirit of God, you are none of his. I pray that some of you have not blasphemed the spirit of God and called his spirit of the devil. Because you, if so, you are in a danger zone. You better pray to God that you do not blaspheme his spirit. As some so-called men of God have. But they're not men of God. They're destined for hell fire. So I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. May you go in peace in Jesus' name.